here. So not the Iceland person, she's going to scrim some. But we've got the speaker for the Radical Independence Campaign. He's a lecturer in sociology in Glasgow. He's written books about the nation who is Scotland. Can we concentrate, thanks? Lots of time known for it. Um, so, it's looking pretty good. We've got him here. Um, hopefully we can just get sound. Um, uh, yeah, he's been very active in the Radical Independence Campaign. So, I might have to hold the mic to this, it seems. <laughs> go, go ahead, Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so the well, Hendrix Reverend is the nearest from the Radical Independence campaign in Scotland. And the first thing I'd like to say is just to enable the slightly the wrong impression of people about what exactly was going on in Scotland, especially when you read in a local language of press, and the government was so open to what was portrayed as a kind of ethnic nationalist movement. The most important thing to say is that the movement in Scotland was for most people not that it was nationalism at all, but it was a kind of social movement um, to establish socialist, environmental, feminist goals, one uh, which actually had a um, real implementation of what becomes a movement, perhaps the first time in many decades. So that's the first and most important thing to say. Um, in a way, it was also very unexpected. Because if you look back at the previous uh, referendum campaigns, as well as the 1979 and the 1987, we had a strong one with Donald, and not at all any problem with and the other kinds of privilege and government in France. And how did we come in this case? A strong one with the participation and the democratic vote and the first day voting that came to the referendum. And the other thing that's the very unexpected was the whole thing that was done to be the deal. And all the time, uh, Cameron wanted um, a kind of one question, a yes or no question. Hi, sorry, sorry to interrupt you. Do you mind just trying to speak really slowly and clearly because our sound is not great there? That would be great. Okay. Uh, I have a little scratch out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, so the original referendum was a deal that was done between David Cameron and Alex Sam. Uh, the deal meaning that uh, there would be one question in the public, I guess no would be no question. And for that, the camera was prepared to give some of the point in terms of the law of 16 and 17 years of the point, in terms of choosing the point, and in terms of choosing the question. And the important thing for the camera was that independence was going to be beaten, and there wasn't a fallback position, so it was a evil max position. And the that some of also called the activity that happened. So this is what happened. It was going to be a really conventional government campaign, led by the suits, with lots of pieces uh, on TV, nobody would be a celebrity on the other side, and this was going to be a crime. But what stopped that happening was the intervention of the radical independence campaign. I should say a bit of a good level of support. Uh, given that it had to 
such a nitrogen foundation to the world of and so on. Not to question how the mines of West Coast would feel in some way that if you were getting them to go. Um, for those of you showing them, votes were yes, around 40%. Uh, and so, I mean, I would have called for it, and it was actually for the show you would get a no vote if you win. And yet, 45% vote in the end was an astonishing achievement, and we didn't actually make the full 50%. We have to be clear that when it came to voting, 97% of the Scottish population were registered to vote, and only 5% of them had actually voted. And the names are unprecedented figures. Uh, we have to go back to 1950 to get the power of the higher level voting. And, and at no point, the British or Scottish has to have so many people as registered to vote as they did for the referendum. So that itself is an achievement. There were cynicism or skepticism about how the bourgeois voting, and the fact that so many people gave up to actually participate in the process of voting, but previously the government was contempt, was no British in the call, it's extremely difficult. So, the uh, thing, I suppose you can see what was already have done that might have made them play, might have been something like that. I think probably the biggest absence that some of you think about in the future is that we need to actually go to working class, um, not just the community, but more places. And um, there was an awful lot of work in the black work in the job losses in the financial sector and the rent and everything like that. Um, and to come to that, we had to go there, we had to go to the work places to live with them as well.